Hello, this is Brian Hagnanes, Director of Game Design here at High Point University. If you're watching this, you have just created your first or possibly second, or you just created a blueprint. It has a gold box there right now. It will get better um, as we move along, but we're going to... Um, we're on our way to creating uh, our first opening door blueprint. And the next thing we're going to talk about is adding more components, specifically a trigger volume. So I'm just going to close this. So this is where we left off. I am in my first person shooter template. Um, one thing that I'm kind of annoyed with at myself is I drag these boxes behind my player character. Notice you can select your player character and you can see it has its own arrow here. It's facing that way and my boxes are on the other side. So every time I've hit play, I've had to turn around and that was not fun for me. So I'm going to select my player character or my first person character in the scene. Notice when I select this, because it has a camera component to it, I can see a little preview of what I see in the bottom right corner of my viewport and on the details, the world outliner, I mean, it shows the first person character is selected and in my details, I can see all sorts of things. And this is where you'll actually see a little, little bit more um, explanation for what a blueprint is made out of. Um, this first person character is a blueprint. It's a character blueprint. It has a capsule component. It has a mesh. It has a camera here. It's got mesh, two P FP guns. So it's got a gun. It's got a sphere, um, hand controllers, and of course VR controller things like that. Um, it's got a lot of stuff in there. Okay, ours so far when I click it, um, really just the default scene route and that thing I call door. Well, I'm going to select my first person character in my scene. I'm going to tap E and W E R as we learned in the last video opens up uh, different transform um, possibilities and so E is going to allow me to rotate and I'm just going to left click and drag it around till I can see my boxes in my uh, viewport here. Preview. Great! There we go. I'm going to go ahead and open up this door PP. Now just for fun I'm going to use this box as a door. Um, I'm going to use the scale tool to do that. So let's go ahead and scale this up like a door. Um, I am going to scale it wide like this. Let's yeah, scale it wide like that in one direction. So in my X direction, I'm scaling it. Oh, how about two? I'm going to hit tab. And in the Y, I'm going to scale it 0.25 and hit tab. And in my Z, I'm going to scale it, would that be 7? Is that too much? Yes, way too much. I'm going to scale it to be 4. Let's do that. That looks kind of like a door. Now, when I do that, of course, it is, I got to drop this. I got to move this a little bit. And now I do have to go into my, my, um, left view because the center of the box when it was smaller was down lower if i want the bottom of that door to sit by the way this is this may be a little bit too um advanced to talk about right now but the reason why this center of the door here i can't move this gizmo right the this this point of where this location of this box is is always going to be in its center because in the digital content creator, DCC as they called it, or call it, uh, let's say they modeled this in Maya or 3D Max, the center of the box was modeled with it being at zero, um, or the center of the box, the, the pivot point. If we wanted to model a door where its pivot point was down here at the base, we'd have to go back into our digital content creator like 3D Max and kind of move it. Um, at least I think in previous versions, I know they've been talking about being able to move the pivot point in future versions of this, but for right now, we're kind of, unless I hear otherwise soon, we're kind of limited to that. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. Is my front good? Yeah, my front is good. And back to perspective. There we go. I'm going to compile that and save that and assume that this is going to look good. Great. All right. Got some doors here. Yeah. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to, um, I want to create a pivot point because 
in games, right, in games, when you want a door to open, uh, something has to trigger the door to know what to do. So let's go ahead and look at that. It's it's one of the first things I learned in this engine, and maybe it's the one of the first things you learned. So I am going to select this default scene group here, and I'm going to click Add Component, and I'm going to scroll down to, oops, I just saw it, Box Collision. And I'm going to click it, Box Collision. And it says box here, not to be confused with any kind of box. I am going to name this, whoops, Collision. There we go. Now, this collision is just the box, right? And we can move this around in our scene just like anything else. And I'm going to make it, I'm, I want this collision to kind of sit, you know, if we want this to be a Star Trek kind of door where we approach it from the front or the back, it, it will allow us, it will sense us. So I want to make this wide enough. So I'm going to kind of scoot back here so you can see what happens. I want this box to be on both sides of the door. So I'm going to go over to not scale this time, but shape, because unlike the static mesh that was the door, right? This is a collision box that Unreal Engine generates inside the engine, and so we actually have the ability to change its X, Y, and Z shape as opposed to its scale of its shape. Okay, um, so by the way, uh, these arrows, red, green, and blue, stand for RGB, also correspond with X, Y, Z. So when you want to know what the X value is, look for the red arrow. That's the direction of X. Uh, that's how I remember it anyway. X, Y, Z, R, G, B, red, green, blue. So X here under extent, box extent, under shape, I'm going to left click and drag it outward. I want that box to be a little bit wider than the door as well, just so that in case we're a little bit over to the left or the right, it, it, whoops, it will still pick us up. Just got to select that back again. So I've got about 120 units. Um, box extent, extent X. Another thing to note while I'm moving the Y value is that these units are mm, centimeters. So get used to metric, folks. Oh, what, what was this? 150? Yeah, 150. 150 in the Y direction. And of course, I'm not sure how big this is going to be. Um, Maybe that's what I need. The box doesn't really need to be that big as long as my character touches it. You know, I, I obviously don't need it to be that tall unless I have a flying character. But does it really matter? No, not really. I am going to set this down a little bit. All right. And once we compile that and save it, now we can kind of see every single one of those has an overlapped box, right? Now here's where the functionality comes in. With this collision selected, scroll down here on your details. This is just one of the many ways to do this. So with the collision detected, scroll down on your details window, drag this out a little bit so you can read this there. This one plus button, look at all these beautiful green plus buttons. These are events that you can just say, hey, happen. Okay, so one of these events that we're going to use a lot is on component begin overlap. And you will get to know and love and care for this event. What this means is when this component, the collision box, begins to be overlapped by something, an event is going to happen. So let's go ahead and click that button, the plus button. It's going to jump over to the event graph. It looks like something weird happened. Just note, you can always go back to your viewport by clicking that tab. Nothing bad happened. It just, when we clicked the event graph, it said on component, it added this red event. Right? There are some other red events that we're not going to necessarily use just yet. Um, we'll get to them later. For right now, we're going to notice on component begin overlap. And the first thing we want to do, just to blow your minds a little bit, is drag, okay, look, check out the architecture of this box, right? It's got the name of this event. All of these events, or all of these nodes are going to be color-coded. Red nodes are events. This event is when this com uh, box is overlapped. And what we have are the overlapped component the actor that overlapped the component, the other component name, 
We've got an index uh, from sweep, and these are all a uh, couple other things that um, we can use in the future. We're not going to get into these. What I really want to point out is this white. I wish it was a triangle. It is an ex exec. Uh, okay, <laughs> what do you call I'm realizing now as I'm having to say it, I don't know what I call it. But this is what executes. This, this is where the script fires. Um, so we're going to drag out from the white, it's actually a pentagon, but we'll call it a white execute node. And we, what are we going to do? We're going to let go. And when we let go, I want to point out, there is like billions of things you can do. You could click on add component AI, add AI perception component. Now I can tell you, I have never added this component in my life. So, and and my point here that I want to just mention, I'm going to just select it and delete it now. I, I want to mention when you let go, this is like almost every single possibility you could ever do. You could set a linear color and you could set a linear color to like this color, right? But this linear color set is just one of the billions, let's say, of things you could do. And to make it even a little bit more daunting is right now Unreal Engine is helping me by keeping this checkbox checked, context sensitive. What this says is that, hey, I'm only going to allow you to do stuff that you can from this, right? So if I just type in the word, um, let's say, um, location. It's only going to allow me to look up any sort of function or component that has the word location in it that is relevant to this type of, of node. If I uncheck context sensitive, it's going to give me even more things that I might not be able to use, okay? So just note that's what this button is for. It's to kind of narrow your search for what you're searching for. I can assure you, I am going to forget what the function is going to be when when I learn from professionals at Epic Games who work on the engine every day of their lives. They do the same thing. They kind of forget, oh, wait, what is that? Set location, what? Um, because things change and, and, and whatnot. And there's millions, there are millions of things you could do. All right, so I'm going to leave context sensitive on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just type up the word print. And I am going to find print string. Now, if the print string right there, you see how it's grayed, it's highlighted, I can just hit return and it'll print the string. Don't worry, this little yellow black line is saying development only. We're not going to use this if we actually ship the game. I'm going to type out the string. Here's a door. Okay, and I'm going to click compile and save that. So now every time I overlap that, it's going to print. Here's a door. Okay, I'm going to close this. And I'm going to play my game. And what should happen is that every time I walk in here, yep, on the left top side of my viewport, it it's just going to print out, here's a door. Now, you will never use that print to have any sort of game user interface that you make. That is strictly for debugging, strictly for seeing, hey, is this going to work? I better print to my screen just to tell me, oh gosh, look at that, that's funny. I forgot they have physics. I knocked over it, that one too, yeah dude, all right. So there we go, we made our first blueprint function, um, or actually our first blueprint event with a reaction, here's a door. In the next, um, in the next series, we're gonna get a little bit more in depth with understanding all of the different things we can do. All right, I will see you in the next video. Bye.